Hi guys, we are coming to you today from LuLaRoe Lisa Houston, and I just wanted to go over a few photography tips for you guys. Um, I have been a consultant for about a month now, and I am not a photographer by any means. However, I have learned a few tips and tricks about how you guys can shoot your inventory, because as you know, we are shooting inventory all the time. Every time we get a new shipment in, you have to take pictures of it. So I'm just gonna kind of go over some ways for you guys to do it quickly, efficiently, and so the product looks great because you want your pictures to look good so that customers can see very easily what your prints look like and the colors are accurate on your screen because of course you know some of these colors are hard to shoot so I want to go over some tips with you guys to show you how to set it up how to shoot it and then also in the end we'll show you how to edit we'll do a different video on editing after this one so this one is just about the setup how to use your camera and how to shoot the product so first um, this is kind of how I set up I have this lighting set that I got on Amazon, and I will post the link to that. Um, it comes with two standing lights with umbrellas, and then this shorter little light here, which I use sometimes, not all the time. Um, I do set this light up down here in the bottom when I have a longer item that I want light to hit. If I have shirts and things that are shorter, you don't need that lower light sometimes, but I'm going to shoot some maxis today. So those are longer, so I do want more light on the bottom. If you turn this off, as you can see, it kind of darkens it up a little bit, especially on the bottom, and you're going to get a lot of shadowing on the bottom. So for these, I turn this bottom light on, and now your whole product is lit up. So when you're setting up these lights, uh, basically you want to get your lighting as close into your product as you can without having any of the equipment in your line of picture. So I kind of set up my lights at different heights. I want this one to catch the top and I want this one to kind of catch the middle, and this light down here is catching the bottom of the skirt. And then you just want to kind of adjust it so there's no shadowing on the back. So you can see if I move this around, some of the shadows appear. You just want to set it up so you don't get that light in the picture, but that there's no shadows in the picture either. So again, I have my light set up staggering a little bit, and I adjust it as I go every time I kind of adjust it a little bit, um, and, and just kind of make sure that the whole product is lit up. Now, a few things about, and then of course you want your tripod and your camera. A few things about the camera, um, I know a lot of people shoot with their iPhones and that probably works great. I think you're going to get a little bit better picture if you buy like a SLR camera. Um, we've had this one for a while, you don't have to spend a ton of money, the SLR cameras you can get for a really good deal now. And you know, you really want a nice camera to shoot all these products so that you can just have it. It's worth your investment um, to get that camera. So a couple of things about the settings on the camera. Again, I'm not a photographer, but there's a couple settings that you need to know. I always shoot in manual mode. And in that manual mode, I am the only two settings I really ever worry about because we have the nice lighting. Now, if you didn't have the lighting, you might have to worry about a few more um, adjustments on your camera. But if you get the right lighting set, and this set was only about, I think it was like $65 on Amazon shipped to your door. So it's a really good deal for a lighting set. Um, if you have the right lighting and the right background, um, background also, I just literally pinned it to my wall and it just stays in my Lula room and it just stays up and then I pull my rocks in front of it when we have parties and I pull them away and we're ready to shoot um, when we want to shoot product. So um, the two settings that I worry about on my camera are my f-stop and my ISO. And basically I have notes on this because, like I said, not a photographer, My the f-stop is uh, basically the setting that opens up the, the iris, they call it, on the camera lens. So the lower your f-stop, and it's on your camera like a one over a number, the lower that is, the more wide open your setting is. And the higher your number is, like one over 200, um, the smaller the opening is to let the light in. So when you have a higher number with that f-stop, um, you're going to get a better focus on your products. So the lower numbers, like one over eight, we'll say, you're gonna have a very small point of focus. So maybe it's gonna focus on this little part here, but the rest of it's gonna be blurred out. So when I shoot with this lighting set, I tend to stay at one over 160. Sometimes I'll go one over 200, depending on what I'm shooting, but I try to stay at one over 160 with the correct lighting, and this would be the correct lighting. Um, you stay at 1 over 160, and then you're really going to get the entire outfit in focus, and your background's going to still be in focus so it doesn't look blurry. And you're, and you're also going to get 
you know, a good definition on your print. So again, one over 160 is a very good starting point, at least for you to start with the right lighting. The next one you want to worry about is your ISO, and that measures um, the sensitivity of the image sensor. The lower the ISO, the less sensitive your camera is to light. So your higher ISOs are used in darker situations. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes along with that um, for regular photography, but for this kind of photography where we're just shooting the products, the way that I look at it in layman's terms basically is when I have darker inventory like blacks and dark grays and this I would consider dark. It does have some light spots, but this is a darker one. I go higher with my ISOs. So I'm going to shoot in 1 over 160 with my f-stop in manual mode and then my ISO I'm going to use a starting point of probably like 3200 and I'm going to shoot a picture and then I check it and then let's say it turned out you know a little bit dark then I would go down. So I'm just going to shoot a picture. Can we zoom in and to show how that's going to look? Okay so I am going to shoot this maxi skirt and I like to bring up the picture on my screen so I can see. Um, you can also, you know, look through your lens, but it's nice if you have the picture on here because when you hold your button down, it's going to focus and it's going to show you exactly the picture is going to look. So I think that that's looking pretty good. And I just hit my ISO button and see where I'm at. And I'm at 2,500. So it was a pretty close guess. I'm going to go up to 3,200 and see what happens. Let's change that back to the 25 where I was at. So they're both pretty similar. I'm going to shoot it. And that's going to look pretty good. So now, personally, <clears throat> when I shoot my products, if I have a product that has a really busy print like this, I'm going to go back and shoot a close-up right in a row. So I'm going to shoot my product in full, and then I'm going to change my ISO, zoom in, take a close-up of the print, and then those pictures will be right in a row on my camera. So when I'm editing, and I'll show you the editing later, um, when we're editing, they're right in a row, and you can I'll show you how to do that collage. So now I'm going to go in and change my ISO and you want to go one or two higher when you're going to zoom in because again you're going to have that light situation. So now I'm zoom I went my ISO up to so up to 4000 and shot it and there we have a really nice close up of the print so we can see what that looks like. So I think that did pretty well. So I'm going to zoom back out and then we're just going to undress our mannequin and move on to the next piece and I'll show you guys how we do that. So when you're styling your mannequin, I usually have um, a steamer right ready. So I don't have one today because none of my maxis are wrinkled, but a lot of your classic tees, Irma's, all those things, some of them are going to come wrinkled because they come packed in these smooshed boxes and they're going to be have some wrinkles in them. And you want your product to look the absolute best when you're photographing them. So I keep a steamer and I plug it in right next to it and I turn it on when I'm going to use it. I have a steamer that I bought for like $15 at a hardware store and it heats up like in maybe 30 seconds. So I just leave it plugged in, turn it on, and if I need to steam something quick, I steam it out. It works really great because it's really hot. Um, and then I just move on to the next piece. So let's grab... I'm going to grab this lighter piece so I can show you guys. So this is obviously a much lighter print, so we're going to have to adjust our settings. Um, <clears throat> when I'm shooting, and if I'm shooting like a lot, like right now I'm reshooting all my maxi skirts because when I first onboarded, we got our whole initial inventory in. I shot everything. We tried to get it done as fast as we could. It took, still took us about eight hours to get through about 700 pieces of inventory, um, which seems like a lot, but we did it real fast. And, and once I was done with it, I realized I wasn't super thrilled about how my pictures looked, the prints, you couldn't really see it very well. So I did a lot of research on how to take better pictures and and do the settings better so that I could pass that information along um, to my team. So we're going to put this maxi on. And this again is a lighter color, so we're going to have to adjust. I personally like to take my pictures with the mannequin shot straight on. Um, when we initially did it, we had them kind of tilted. And once I got those pictures back, I wasn't thrilled with how it looked because I felt like if it was shot straight on, you were going to get a better, really, idea of how the product looks. Now, I'm shooting my maxis up on the mannequin like this just because I want to get the whole 
thing in the picture and you wear them on the waist when you get to the larger sizes, because this is a small medium mannequin, your maxi is going to hit the floor and it's not going to do the best picture. So I shoot them up like this because it gives the best, I think the best look. So now we're going to go and I'm going to put this back on screen mode. And now I don't know if you can zoom in on this and see, but you can see how much lighter this already looks on the screen because the first one we shot was a darker product and this one is a lighter product. So we're going to have to adjust our ISO. So I'm going to guess we're going to go all the way down to like 1600 possibly on this one. And you can see right there how much better that looks. So your lighter products, you use lower ISOs and your darker products, you're going to use higher ISOs. So I'm going to shoot this. And that turned out good. So now I'm going to zoom in to grab that print and you're going to have to adjust your ISO again, just like before and move it up one possibly two. We'll see if one works for this. Yep, I think one's going to work. So I just moved it up one. And now you can, whoop, I kinda, there we go. You can see, see I like to have it on the screen because then I can look like right at the screen and write the product and say, did I get the best representation of the product that I'm shooting? Because if it's on the screen, you can see it. Otherwise you have to keep paging through your pictures to see if it looks right. And this way you can see right there, yep, this looks like an accurate presentation of what I am selling. So go ahead and grab another one. <clears throat> In my mannequin, I'm lucky it comes apart real easy. So I can just quick change. Let's do this fun fish one. Also, some of the sizes you're going to get, like the XXSs, are going to be too small for your mannequin. And that's just how it is. Unless you're going to buy three or four mannequins, you're going to have to adjust your inventory on the mannequin. So for my extra, extra smalls that you don't want to like squish it on your mannequin so that it looks really weird because the extra, extra smalls are tiny. Um, so they're going to look funny in your mannequin. So then what I do is I just hang them on a hanger and just kind of put my hanger in here so they're hanging right in front. So I'm basically taking a straight on shot of that product for the extra, extra small. When you get up into like the 3XL sizes, I have little clips. Oh, you did with them, but they're little clips and I just basically take the product and kind of pull it back like this and clip them so it looks more fitted on the mannequin because you don't want the clothing looking like a big old moo moo on the mannequin because that's not, that's not nice to look at. So people aren't going to want to buy that. So you want to make it look nice and fitted and presentable on your mannequin. So here's this one. This is an extra small. Oh, fish maxi. This is a kind of a middle of the road color, I would say, as far as your settings. So we're going to go back on here. So it's obviously darker than the last one we shot. You can see already how dark that looks. Can you, can you shoot it here? You can kind of see how it's already looking too dark. Like that's not a good representation. So I'm obviously going to have to do something with the ISO. So I'm going to go out and shoot the full product first. And actually, right here where I had the close up for the light product is looking good. I'm going to see what I'm set at. I am set at a 2000 ISO right now. So I'm going to shoot it and see how it looks. It's almost a little light, so I'm going to change that. And I'm going to move it. No, that's too light. Okay, so if, it's, if it ends up too light and you want to darken it up, you're going to lower your ISO. So I'm going to go down to 1600 and see how that works, because there is some light prints in there. And as you can see, can you see that? Mm. I think it looks too dark. I just feel like it's getting lost in there. So I'm going to go back up to 2000. I think that's going to be our best shot. Yep. And so now I'm going to zoom in. But now, of course, that's going to be dark. Adjust this just a little. That's going to be too dark. So I'm going to change my ISO up to probably 3200 to try to get a good picture of those fish. And I think that looks, I think that looks pretty good. So basically, um, kind of went over the ISO, the f-stop, those are the two major ones that you want to worry about. Styling your mannequin. Um, I also put the link of where I got my mannequin. I have two of them now. 
Um, I only use one when I'm shooting, but I like to have them in my Lula room just so I can have like some outfits ready for people to look at. And you know, you can do outfits on hangers, that's great, but they really look so nice on your mannequin. Um, kind of gives people an idea better of what, of what you're selling because it looks like it's on a person, not on a hanger. Um, and all of Lularo's stuff looks so much better on a person and on the mannequins. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the tips for the photography that I have for you guys. Um, check out our blog. I'm gonna t I am typed it all up for you guys with the tips and tricks and maybe a few extra little pointers in there um, along with the links to where I got everything. And then we will go ahead and shoot the video for the editing so you guys can see how we edit these pictures. Thanks.